Now let's turn to a, another uh, topic um, that is a little more, a little more fun. Um, I want each of you to tell us, uh, and if you aren't directly booking, uh, like Albert is overseeing it, uh, a lot of different things going on in the Virtuoso Network, tell us about an over-the-top, incredible luxury experience that you were able to deliver to your customers, or one you've heard of, I guess. This, uh, and I will go straight to Naveen first, uh, and very quickly, just what, give us the, the, over, the, the, the most amazing, maybe this year, the most amazing trip that you organized for customers. Right, so, you know, people think of luxury as being experienced. People think of luxury as being giving people time back. People think of luxury as enjoying finer foods, etc. But just think of luxury in a pristine environment. We just finished talking about sustainability that needs to be sustained forever in Antarctica. And we have four ships that cruise those waters. Now imagine yourself in those beautiful waters surrounded by ice and ice-capped landscapes all around you. And now imagine that you've come back from your excursion ashore, ashore back onto the ship, and by the pool, the crew throws a pool party that allows you a lot of indulgences, because ultimately, luxury is about indulging the individual, whatever they fancy. And in this case, it could be a swim in the heated pool. It could be sipping fine champagne by the poolside. It could be enjoying some blinnies and caviar. And it could be just having convivial conversation and enlightened discourse about what you just experienced, all of which constitute luxury and over the top in the destination where you are. Not That's a bad part trip. of it. Uh, Rick, give us an example of uh, a luxury trip that your group, that Tauk, has done. Well, I know you know what I'm going to talk about because I'm going to take the word over the top literally. And uh, it, Arthur Tauk was a heli skier, and, and, oh, and, yes, and he was I up knew. in the Canadian Rockies, and he asked the owner of, uh, of these incredible mountain lodges what they do with them during the summers, and they said, well, we shut them down. He had this great idea that if he could take people up to these lodges, he could give them an alpine experience that they would never get unless they were mountain climbers. So he could take people who were not in the best of condition or maybe didn't have uh, hiking experience, and he could literally take them over the top of the Rockies and get them off the beaten path so that they could experience um, things that they'd never get to see in a million years, thousands of miles of Rockies in these incredible um, alpine lodges with all of the, 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 the coziness of home. And uh, so it was, it was a risk, but you know, it, the, the impact was far greater than anything he'd ever expected. You know, people were coming back with a reborn spirit. They, they were coming back, you know, with, a, with not really a sightseeing experience, but an emotional experience that they carry with them forever. And the people in those lodges, they became bonded. James came with me a couple of years ago, and the small group that traveled with us, we're still in touch with them today. And I think that's the kind of experience we try to provide in all of our journeys. They, they, they last long beyond the time that the journey is over. Yeah, except if you have a girlfriend who's afraid of heights, and I told her there'd be no mountain climbing. I said, the, you know, Tauk is a little older and we'll be fine, but then try a Via Ferrata when you're hanging on the edge of a cliff, clipped to a, a cable, and she's looking at me like, you're, you're, you're killing me, and that was it. Pure, purely <laughs> optional, the Via Ferrata. We had another group that wanted to play bridge on top of the mountain, so we flew a bridge table up and they played bridge. So you do have choices. Yeah, well, if I, if I recall, Rick, you were up there waiting for us for three hours while she made up the mountain, but that's another story. Uh, personal, it was an over-the-top experience, absolutely. Uh, Shannon, uh, from all your hotels, uh, t t talk about one that you know of where they really delivered something amazing. I mean, how, how much time do we have? Uh, I know, I know. We could be here all day uh, talking about this stuff. No, there's one. I'm actually to speak about one that uh, I actually personally experienced. And over the top, maybe um, I'm, I'm stretching the definition of that because it was really an experience that was super impactful on me. Um, so we recently hosted our annual convention in Marrakesh, and uh, I had the, the pleasure and privilege to stay uh, at the Royal Mansour in Marrakesh in the uh, Grand Riyadh, which was an over the top experience. Um, but <laughs> the experience. Uh, that I want to share with you was um, Jean-Claude Massant, who is the, uh, uh, the GM of the property, has a very close relationship with um, this, this woman, Doreen, who started the Center for Disadvantaged Children. It's called uh, Fears and Forts. 
Um, and there's also associated with that a, a, a village that's a co-op, basically, uh, that um, any of the goods, they, they sell tapestries, they sell um, pottery, and they sell um, rugs. And any of the um, profit that they sell, they, they share with the village. And so I had this really incredible experience of staying in one of the most extraordinary hotels and one of the most extraordinary destinations ever, but having the opportunity to go into the local uh, community, uh, meet uh, local leaders, and see the, the impact of uh, this extraordinary hotel and see what that partnership with this extraordinary hotel, the effect that it's having on the local community. Um, for me, it was a truly transformative experience, and so maybe not over the top in terms of... Um, well, it's transformative, it and that is a word we're increasingly using now beyond... I mean, experiential is getting a little old. We've got to think of a new word, right? Yes. Uh, transformational is the, was the buzzer, at least yeah. recently, and I'm sure we'll think of something else by the end of the day. Uh, Albert, you have access to all and see all this stuff. What, what is the best experience? Well, you actually, you could tell one. I know that because <laughs> I know you would go out and experience all these properties and products yourself. So. Hey, that's not true. I know. <laughs> well, I see your Facebook. I know. <laughs> well, actually, as far as the folks that actually create the experiences are like Leah and Becky and her team and obviously the rest of all of the, my panelists here. What, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to see some of this in terms of the products. Like yesterday, for example, uh, I had not been there, but the new Park Hyatt uh, Manhattan Sky Villa on the 59th floor of the hotel, which goes for $50,000 a night. You haven't been in that suite yet? No. I'm I, very I, disappointed, Albert. I, I, I have I been away. I actually <laughs> beat him to see it. There you are. See? So, I mean, things like that, that raised the bar. I was just uh, in London, and obviously there was there's a hotel that has... Uh, the, the, their, their luxury, their top suite has its own postal code. Uh, <laughs> though, I mean, that's where, where is over the top or an experience like friends of mine. Yeah, but who mails anything anymore? That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or maybe when you have, when you have your, you know, what they call it, Uber Eats delivery or your food in that city, <laughs> that's for true. a six bedroom. Or even personally, like um, a year ago, some friends of mine in the business in Italy said, would you like to see something special? I said, of course, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And as he took us, we went to the back room of the, uh, the, the Sistine Chapel, and all of a sudden he took us and said, okay, follow me. And to the side of that room, to the side of the Sistine Chapel, is a little door. But who in the room has seen the two popes on Netflix? Mm -hmm. So you, you heard that the conversation, there's a room called the Weeping Room, which is where the pope goes in when he's voted in and starts to either weep for joy, or weep for happiness or whatever, or what did I inherit here? But we entered that room and I had no idea where we were and we saw and were able to touch, every, it was just amazing. And of course, as we were leaving, there comes the Pope. So, I mean, talk about over the top because that, again, these are the moments. And that is pretty over the top. And then there was Jada de Laurentiis in the corner. So, it's like, where are we? I mean, I'm making the, I mean, I'm not making this up. It's part of what we all live and experience, but more important, the stories that we hear and they're able to share again. And what you can business. sell, too, out there. Yeah. This is like, uh, and what is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leah, uh, you, you're catering to a, a slightly low, uh, younger demographic. I mean, what is the, the craziest experience you've booked for them? So I could be here all day with uh, stories about this. Um, in 14 years doing this, we've done quite a lot. Um, but I think most recently we did something really special. A um, uh, husband wanted to surprise his wife for her 40th birthday. She'd been saying for years that she always wanted to learn how to cook. So he and us uh, came together and we hired her favorite chef in the United States and planned a week with the chef, a week of um, going to five of the top Michelin star restaurants in Europe. Each day um, was a different location and the chef worked with the, the chef at the Michelin star restaurant to actually each day go to the farms that they source their vegetables from, the markets, explain how they make everything, how they actually choose every item that they make the menu with. Um, and then at the end of the day, the um, chef uh, locally cooked with the chef that was escorting the client. Um, That's pretty so, amazing. That's pretty amazing. Although I, I tell you, after five days of that, I would have got Taco Bell. That would that be it. <laughs> um, Becky, uh, you have a huge agency. You book yes. top clients all over the place. What's the, the? We do, and I'm happy to say we work with 
everyone on this panel, our advisors do, to deliver over-the-top experiences, and each one of them uh, deliver above and beyond. But the key is listening to your client, what they're looking for, and making sure that you pick up on the little tidbits. But actually, the example I'm going to give is we are working with Leah and her company right now on a client, not a young client, who called and his dream is to play Augusta with his two sons. Money's not an object. He said, I want to play this. Well, I don't know if you know, but it's impossible to play Augusta unless you know someone. My advisor came to me, said, I don't know how I'm going to deliver on this. So we actually called uh, Leah and her team, even though in some cases you would think they're a competitor, but again, know who your partners are, know who can help you deliver, and they've come through, and the client's going to be playing in May at Augusta with his two sons after the Masters. And oh, I'm going to say you're during the Masters. That would oh, be a no, little... no, no, no. No, I'll be at the Masters when I want to <laughs> No, that's great. So that's, that's kind of what you can do in luxury.